Hi. So, uh, if you've been paying attention to my social media, which I don't know, maybe you are, maybe you aren't, I was super excited about getting this tattoo. And I wanted to talk about why that was and what exactly this tattoo means to me. Um, before I get into this, I want to make a couple of things really clear. First of all, and most importantly, I'm going to talk about why I left Mormonism, and I'm going to talk about what exactly I found the negatives of that institution to be. So I want to make absolutely clear that when I am saying negative things about Mormonism, I'm talking about the institution, not about the people who are Mormon, because as a population, people who are Mormon, in my experience, are like most other populations. Some of them are fantastic people. A very, very few, none of whom I have met, are really, really terrible people. Most of them, I'd say like 90%, are just kind of in the middle. They're average people trying to do the best they can possibly do in their life. So, when I say negative things about Mormonism, I'm not talking about them. I'm not talking about the people who are Mormon. I'm talking about the institution specifically. The other thing that I want to make really clear, because I have a bad habit of not making this clear in day-to-day -day life, is that I'm talking very subjectively about my own experience with Mormonism. So I just I want to make sure that's clear. And if you are Mormon, hi, I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad you're watching this, and I hope that this can help you understand a little bit about why people leave, because um, from what I'm aware of, a lot of people have been leaving. So my goal here is not to antagonize you, it's not to make people who are Mormon feel bad for being Mormon. That's not my place. You do whatever you feel is right for you. What I want here is to just tell my story as it <laughs> relates to this tiny piece of art that has been permanently inked into my arm. <laughs> I first realized that I didn't want to be Mormon when I was 15. 15 was a weird year for me. I was very, very angry that year. Um, people who know me will be able to tell you that I'm kind of a hothead. Well, okay, not kind of. I'm being generous to myself. I am a hothead. I get mad about things that aren't really that important, and ten seconds later, I'll be okay because I've got that anger out. This was different from that. Um, 15 was a rough year because that was the year that my parents split up. And that was the year that I started high school. So I was dealing with a lot of change and a lot of upheaval in my life during that year. And at the same time, I was also starting this thing called seminary, which isn't seminary in the way that most people mean seminary, like a college where you go to study religion so that you can be some kind of pastor or priest or something. This is something that all Mormon high schoolers do, well, okay, not all of them, but most of them, where if you're outside of Utah, you get up really early in the morning before school, and you go to some sort of a meeting place, and you learn about Mormon theology. So as I was being really angry and upset and trying to figure out what my place in the world was now, I was also, for the very first time, having to sit down and really face up to what this religion I was a part of actually taught, what the actual canonized beliefs were. And this is why I want to stress that I'm talking about the institution, not the people. The institution, as I learned through this, was teaching things that were very racist and sexist and homophobic. The people that I knew weren't. They were not those things, which is why I say that this was the first time where I really had to face up to the actual canonized theological beliefs of my religion, because up until this point, I had been taught by people who, within the confines of what the church thought morality was, were trying to teach me 
lessons for living life as a good person. And when I got to this point, and you really had to teach out of the books of scripture, that changed. And I realized through all of this that I didn't want to be part of a religion that said that I was supposed to be having children and being a wife and staying home, if at all possible. Like, especially now, Mormonism is not going to tell you that you have to stay home and be a wife, but it's very heavily suggested that that is the best path for you if you are a woman. Which bothered me, because, well, okay. So backing up. I learned that things were not as nice as I thought they were. Part of that was realizing that I had grown out of the very conservative worldview that Mormonism has, and I was trying not to jump ship just because I was angry, because I was very angry that year, and I didn't want to just abandon something that I had spent my entire life being a part of because I was angry. That seemed childish. So I didn't really come to the conclusion that I really wanted to leave until I was 17. And what happened at 17 was that I had finally had enough time figuring out what I actually wanted out of life to be able to confidently say that I did not want the Mormon plan for myself. I didn't want to go grow up and get married to a man and have babies. I wanted to date people who were female. I wanted to not have any children. I wanted to go have a career and have that be the main focus of my life. <laughs> Aside from that, high school was where I really realized things about myself. I realized that I was gay. I realized that a lot of my friends were gay and that I wanted not to be a part of a religion that said that they were going to go to hell just because they loved people who were the same gender as themselves. And it's hard to explain how you get these teachings in Mormonism because at no point does any book of Mormon scripture come out and say gay people are going to hell. But there's enough... The thing about Mormonism is that it's not as codified as a lot of other religions. So, you're working a lot when you're working with Mormon scripture with things that prophets in the last few decades have said. So, like, no, there's not a part of the Book of Mormon that says that gay people are going to hell, because when Joseph Smith wrote the Book of Mormon, gay people weren't a thing he was thinking about. So you have a lot of contemporary living scripture, and a lot of that is where I was getting this, to clarify it for people who aren't Mormon and don't really know how Mormonism works. Um, so I was sitting in these early morning meetings, hearing how people who were in charge of my religion right then, right there, were saying that my friends weren't going to heaven if they acted on the love they felt for other people. To give you a pretty clear, solid example of this pop culture, a couple years ago, um, the Mormons put out this big letter, my camera keeps cutting me off, stating unequivocally, their stance on gay marriage and saying that if you were a child of gay parents and you wanted to be baptized Mormon, you had to be 18 first. Which doesn't sound like a bad thing until you realize that most, air quotes, normal, meaning children of heterosexual parents who were raised in the church, normal Mormons get baptized at age 8. That's just how Mormonism works. Um, I didn't want to be a part of that. And the more I researched, the more I realized that it just wasn't a tenable religion for me, and that I didn't agree with a lot of what they taught. So, I tried to figure out a way to tell my parents this. My dad had already left, 
at this point. My mom, though, was still invested in this church. And at the time, I thought my siblings were too. So I finally, when I was 18, told my mom that I wanted to leave. And this led to a huge argument between us. And she and I had argued a lot. I love my mother to death. She's a wonderful woman, one of the best, strongest people I know. But uh, we're a little bit too similar to live together functionally. Um, we're both very strong-willed, and we both have very strong opinions. And when those opinions are not in agreement, there are arguments. But this argument was different because it wasn't my mom arguing with me over not doing what I was told or over complaining about something. This was her arguing with me, not because of something petty like that, but because she thought that my eternal soul was in danger of damnation if I left the church. The Mormon church teaches that the farthest reaches of hell, the worst possible parts of hell, called outer darkness, are reserved for people who do very terrible things. And one of those things is people who know the truth, ergo the Mormon religion, and turn their back on it, which is exactly what I was trying to do at that point. So my mom was arguing with me to try and save my eternal soul and to try to keep her eternal family together, because that's one of the things that had attracted her to Mormonism in the first place, the idea that if you were good people, if you were a good parent and you taught your child to be good, you would be together in the afterlife forever and ever and ever. And she thought she was going to lose me in the afterlife because I didn't want to be Mormon anymore. But my mother, being a very strong and understanding person, finally realized a day or two later that I needed to leave for my own well-being, that I needed to leave to make my own self feel okay. And she asked me to wait until I was 19 so that she could come to grips with it and then leave with the understanding that she wouldn't fight me on leaving at that point. Now, I agreed to this because I didn't like fighting with my mom. So on my 19th birthday, the morning of my 19th birthday, I sent my letter. Well, okay. It was an email. But it was my letter that I had been working on for literally four years to the church office building, which handles membership records and all that nonsense. And I said, I want out in that letter. And this began a whole long saga of phone calls and all kinds of messages between me and them trying to figure out why I hadn't received confirmation that my name was no longer on the rolls, yada, 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 yada. To make a long story short, I had to call them three times, and I got different answers each time about whether or not my name was still on the rolls. And I would have just let it lie, because my bishop, which is like a Mormon pastor, had seen my resignation letter. They uh, they had sent it to him, and he had called me and confirmed that I actually did want to leave, and I said yes. And he said he'd sent it through, and, and I knew this particular bishop to be a very caring and honest man so if he said that he had done something he had done it and I, I wanted to leave it lie but I at this point emotionally and mentally was just I was out I was done with Mormonism mentally and emotionally so I was getting a little bit petty and I wanted the letter confirming that I was out so that I could frame it and on the third call we realized that the letters had been getting lost in the mail because of a transcription in the address so they send it to my actual address, and I have it framed right there in my room. That letter and this tattoo are constant reminders to me of one of the few things in my life that I am actively proud of. I don't say that I am actively proud of a lot of my life. I'm, I don't regret a lot of my life. I am proud of a lot of the things that I have done, but I'm not like actively proud of very many other things. Like, I am actively proud of the fact that I managed to fight my way out of a religion I didn't want to be in. Which is why I got this. Now, if you know Legend of Zelda, you'll recognize the Triforce. 
if you don't know Legend of Zelda, the Triforce is a sacred object in game lore. And it's made of three pieces. One of which represents strength, one of which represents wisdom, and one of which, the one I've inked in, are you gonna, are you gonna focus? Yes. That piece that I've inked in represents courage. I chose to have that part marked in because what I am proud of more than anything else in my life is the fact that I am brave. I was brave in getting through my parents' divorce even if I was angry about it. I think I'm brave enough to do this LA thing, but I'm not sure yet. It's confusing and scary, but I'm getting there. And if you'll indulge me, I feel like it took a lot of courage to get me out of Mormonism, which is why I wanted to commemorate that with this. Getting out of Mormonism was one of the best things I ever did for myself. It allowed me to come out to my mom. It allowed me to accept a lot of things about myself that I wouldn't have otherwise. And it allowed me to get through... It allowed me to do a lot of things that I never thought I was going to do. Like, get a tattoo. Mormonism does not condone getting tattoos. Having my first drink on my 21st birthday was not a thing I ever thought I was going to be able to do. But I did, because I managed to get out of Mormonism. When my siblings and my mom followed me out a year or so later, we as a family went to Caribou and got our communal first cups of coffee. I have been able to do a lot of things that I never thought I would be able to do because I grew out and away from Mormonism. And I am proud of that, which is why this is now permanently a part of my body. Thank you so much for listening to this. I, I've i been thinking a lot about the proper way to tell the leaving story on this channel, and I'm like, you know what? Leroy Jenkins, this is it. I'm sorry this is so late, but I hope you'll understand having watched this. I will see you all next week.